It's hard to ponder the infinite possibilities of space and not get romantic about it. It's this sense of wonder that makes the prospect of Starfield even more intriguing than just being Bethesda Game Studios next major RPG. But it's best to cast aside that fascination with the cosmos because at its core, Starfield follows a very familiar formula without meaningfully engaging with its setting or the gameplay systems therein. It's ultimately a journey that's a mile wide, but an inch deep. It's undoubtedly impressive in scale from the sheer number of star systems and planets to the multitude of game mechanics that tie the experience together. But once you see how all these big ideas are interconnected from a narrative and technical standpoint, the illusion of a grand cosmic voyage starts to wear thin. And so, somewhere along my 55 or so hours spent playing, I dropped the notion of finding that wondrous space adventure and accepted Starfield for what it is, a shooter-focused RPG in the well-tread Bethesda framework. Starfield's main quest is the most emblematic of the game's shortcomings. Despite romanticizing the idea of taking to the stars, its narrative ambitions fall into shallow stories that undersell the spacefaring premise. You start as a lowly miner extracting resources and within minutes you come in contact with an artifact that activates mysterious visions of something greater out in the galaxy. You're then shuffled into the ranks of a small organization called Constellation whose sole purpose is to chase these artifacts and uncover their purpose. With the handful of characters who make up the group, Starfield tries to instill personality into its story, but consistently weak writing and generic dialogue means that these characters, who do have some interesting moments along the way, largely fall flat. It's especially tough to buy into this artifact collecting scenario when the game's story extols the virtues of science, yet undermines them by haphazardly throwing around scientific concepts in dialogue, and then resorting to inexplicable supernatural forces that everyone in game seems to just accept at face value. There's very little weight or impact given to what characters often describe as great discoveries that could change the course of history, and it's missing an earnest examination of humanity's place in space, even when it tries to be self-reflective. The wild goose chase that is the main quest lacks strong motivations from a narrative perspective, and the mission structure relies on a predictable formula. You're often shooting your way through mining facilities to dig up these artifacts that your colleagues happen to locate halfway across the galaxy, or you're fast traveling to faraway star systems to fetch clues, following laughably bad riddles, or having conversations that could have been an email. There are occasional breaks in the pace which lead to memorable moments such as having to navigate the grimy underbelly of the cyberpunk inspired city of Neon where all the dystopian archetypes thrive. Engaging in conversations to diffuse tense situations offers some variance in the moment to moment beats, but the outcomes are largely the same. You'd be surprised how far a simple persuasion check can get you, yet how little the game cared if things went violent. Fine enough. I'll go back, all right? These kinds of moments highlight the illusion of choice, where supposed moral quandaries boil down to vague differences in philosophy. But despite the underwhelming revelations throughout the story, Starfield does shine for a moment in how it lets you end your journey, contextualizing New Game Plus in one of the most interesting ways I've seen while offering a few tangible incentives for a second run. As is tradition with Bethesda games, however, the Golden Path questline is not exactly the main course, and it's in the side quests where Starfield is at its best. Here, you set aside the wonders of the great unknown and instead dive into the problems of various factions and the people who've settled in a few cities and towns scattered across the galaxy. One such example is the Crimson Fleet faction questline, where a de facto galactic government coerces you into going undercover inside space's biggest criminal ring, and this chain of quests is one of the finest in a Bethesda RPG. It's not so much the ethical dilemmas or tension you feel when bouncing between the two factions, but the fact that you find yourself in the middle of some wild situations like corporate disputes, intense shootouts, blackmailing characters, and infiltrating high security facilities. Compelling subplots emerge in the process that also tie back to the quest at hand, and you're hit with some exceptional set pieces that incorporate multiple facets of Starfield's gameplay systems at a steady pace. Not every optional questline matches that scope and depth, but there are a few flashes of similar quality, like getting caught up in megacorp drama with Ryujin Industries, playing space deputy for the Free Star Collective, or standing up to a greedy CEO to help settlers find a new home. Side content comes in varying degrees of quality, but these are the kinds of rabbit holes you want to fall down. They are what makes Starfield worth unraveling, even if the process often feels like a checklist of objectives to blaze through. While I don't give the impression of having major impacts on the galaxy's fate, 
or explore bigger narrative themes with much depth, side content is dealt out in droves, and the potential of finding something special propelled me to make an effort to discover a worthwhile thread. Through these various quest lines, main story, and side content alike, the limitations of Starfield's RPG elements surface. Dialogue options offer some variants, but rarely influence the overarching path. You can gauge what you can get away with and realize quests are largely on a set track. Very well. As a favor to the fleet, I'll let Barrett go. You may get the opportunity to use the arbitrary persuasion system, which breaks off as a minigame awkwardly detached from the actual conversation at hand, or bribe your way past objectives, but those exist as shortcuts to the same end result. There's still a sense of building your character and progression since you can pick permanent traits at the start and earn skill points as you level up. Starfield's skill tree streamlines the perks, stats, and traits of previous Bethesda RPGs, which makes sense since Starfield isn't really concerned with giving you multiple avenues to solve problems or complete objectives. There aren't really builds, rather game mechanics you want to prioritize like damage for certain weapon types, lockpicking, persuasion success rates, among other things. Now Starfield picks up some of that slack when it becomes a shooter because of the satisfying gunplay and roster of varied weapons to tinker with. While you shouldn't expect the feel of, say, Destiny 2, the gunplay in Starfield is by far the best Bethesda has offered, especially when I was zipping around firefights with my jetpack while swapping between tricked out laser rifles, auto shotguns, and grenade launchers, it was hard to deny Starfield's chops as a shooter. The spacefaring fantasy wouldn't be complete without your own ship to pilot in dogfights. Ship combat can be frustrating at times, and having to manually allocate a pool of resources to specific functions like engine speed, weapon power, and shield potency takes some getting used to, but as I got more involved in earning new ships, upgrading my pilot skills, and buying better parts, I became more satisfied with engaging in ship combat, especially against high-level enemies. While I do appreciate having a spaceship as a means to break up the pace, this also highlights the segmented nature of how you actually navigate Starfield. Presumably for convenience's sake, trekking across the galaxy is relegated to strings of fast travel points. You pull up your star map, chart the course, jump to a planet's low orbit, then select where you want to land on the surface. There's an apparent lack of seamlessness since each step in the process involves menus, watching short scene transitions, and sitting through loading screens. All this creates a feeling that Starfield's universe is rather small, and very quickly, planets become stand-ins for individual cities. Though very limited from a gameplay perspective, space exploration is still novel in Starfield, harkening back to the hours I spent in Mass Effect's galaxy maps out of sheer curiosity. Pulling up the star map to see a hundred something planets is impressive, and I still love being overwhelmed by the view of a new planet from my ship in low orbit. However, the sense of discovery is dulled when I'm often landing on these barren surfaces on these planets only to find the same mining facility or a research laboratory I found halfway across the galaxy on another planet. Now, Bethesda's RPGs have a reputation for being buggy, and don't get me wrong, Starfield has its fair share of bugs. But I've mostly encountered rather inoffensive glitches fixed by reloading or rebooting the game, thankfully. Across my 55 plus hours, I jump between a high-end PC, a minimum spec laptop, and both Xbox Series X and S. Starfield is a demanding game, and you'll get some frame drops in densely populated areas or in the heat of battle, but the game always manages to stay playable on reasonable graphics settings. The 30 FPS cap on consoles is a bit disappointing, but the important part is that it held a fairly consistent frame rate throughout. So accounting for all its ups and downs, I can't help but feel Starfield is missing an overall sense of purpose. My favorite RPGs have their fair share of shortcomings and limitations, but the best ones always leave a lasting impact that comes through in a clear purpose. Even my favorite Bethesda RPGs do this well. Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim have intricate magic systems and choices that impact the game and reward you for exploration in whichever direction you wander in. Obsidian's Fallout New Vegas drops you in a barren desert wasteland, yet is so full of personality, humor, and sobering examinations of the human condition in the wake of societal collapse. I can't help but feel that Starfield banked on the intrigue of space exploration and the vastness of the cosmos and forgot to create much of an identity beyond that. Despite the limitless possibilities the final frontier offers, Starfield's version of humanity remains largely homogenous. I didn't come in expecting something poetic like the Carl Sagan books I read growing up or something as intricate as a sci-fi lore built in the Mass Effect trilogy, but I did want something more than a pared down version of the Bethesda template transposed over a space setting. Holy shit. You actually found me. Now, why did I get a feeling this is what we'd find? <laughs> it's good to see you, Barrett. 
Starfield has its moments for sure. Its satisfying gunplay makes combat exciting, especially when it's integrated into set pieces within the better quest lines. And although it's limited in its conception of space exploration, there's still a novelty in poking around the galaxy to see star systems up close and personal. However, it struggles to deliver a cohesive and memorable RPG experience amid the seemingly boundless sea of stars. And for all its reverence for scientific philosophy, its stories and characters paint a rather tame and sterile vision for what our spacefaring future could look like. When you strip Starfield down to its essentials, it relies on a tried and true but very well-tread formula, and is missing the depth of the games that came before it. Starfield is more concerned with quantity over quality and leaves that experience at the surface level.